So I have talked about Obsidian a bunch of times lately and how it's a really good app and how I love it. And those of you who have followed the channel for a while know that I actually do a lot of work on my iPad. I have a Mac mini and then I have an iPad. And usually my iPad, well, it's still off to the side, but I'm using my monitor that I usually use for Mac as my iPad monitor as well right now. So the question you must ask is, how do you use Obsidian with your iPad? Because there is no app for it yet. There is no mobile app for Android, for anything. It's all coming, but it's not here right now. And yet I still produce files regularly with my research, with my writing that is that are accessible to Obsidian. So today, that's what we're gonna talk about, the mobile story for Obsidian. Buckle up. There are a few apps that are okay, I'll say okay for Obsidian. The first one that we're actually in is um, IA Writer. It is okay. It is actually my preferred writing application. Now, the reason I say it's only okay is because it doesn't recognize Wikilinks. See, I lost my Bluetooth keyboard for a second. It doesn't support Wikilinks. Now, it does do file inclusion though, but that's kind of its own proprietary thing. And the way that it does this is by what they call um, a content block. So we can grab that right here when you hit the little command sign and then insert a content block and we could insert, I'm gonna delete this in a second, agenda. So now it's inserted it with its own custom markdown and as far as Wikilinks go, this is what um, IA Writer wants to do. But I don't actually want that. So what is even better, because it will follow Wikilinks, is OneWriter. Same file. Uh, same, same file. It won't pick up the changes. The other issue with this is that IA Writer syncs best with iCloud and doesn't really support Dropbox very well. And OneWriter syncs with Dropbox doesn't support uh, iCloud very well. Or really at all. So I actually have a, my Mac running a sync between two folders, which is nerdy. Um, and ultimately I just say use one writer. Don't do the sync thing. So this will actually follow the links. Now one of the things here is if I click in it, I'm in edit mode, so it's not gonna love that. And we can go, what is it? Command option P will get me to um, preview mode and then I can click on IMF. Rather, I can touch IMF, which has nothing right now. I can go Command Option P. It actually has something. Um, it's got my regular title, but you can't. You said you can't actually um, click on it. Right, even here, if I click, there you go. How to take smart notes? It took me in preview. It didn't actually take me though. There you go. All these things you always find out when you do this stuff. All right, click. It's not taking me. Tap. It's taking me there. Perfect. And if I go back to edit mode, right, Atomic Habits, again, click, it'll take me, or it searches for Atomic Habits. This is actually an interesting thing it does. So let's create an Atomic Habits note right now. So if it doesn't have the book I'm looking for or the note that I'm looking for, because some of these are links I've transferred from books I've read, but I haven't migrated yet. See my book note, I'm actually gonna migrate some stuff out of my notebook, my book notebook in a second. So it doesn't, but if it doesn't see the note there, then what I can actually do is if I put the note in, I can actually click the plus and it's going to create atomic habits. And I have, what is it? BZ. Yep. It gives me my, um, my template for this, right? I know it's James Clear. Uh, what notebook is that in? I don't actually know. That would be my reading notebook. Actually, that's not sure I can figure it out right now because I keep an index at the back of my reading notebooks where things are. So Atomic Habits is in, yeah, sorry, it's in 2018 R1 and page 144 is where that note starts. So I'd actually go like this, 2018 R1, because I want all my 2018 books together. And I just say, I know it's page 144, that's where it starts. New view, I can go to my site, the site, curtismichael.ca, atom, Atomic Habits. Oh, atomic habits. I can copy it and I'll put that in here. So I have the starting of this note going. I actually create this note for every, uh, this template for every book that I review, every book that I look at. But that's how we, uh, that's how it works with some of it. Um, 
So let's actually take a real note on the book Innovators, because I'm not going to do this right now. So what I would do for a real book like Innovators is I would create a new file, Command N. I know this is the Z, right? And I know the author is Walter Isaacson. The notebook it is in uh, 2020 R1, 2020 R1? It might actually be 2019. Innovators, 2020 R1, yeah, 2020 R1, um, 68. So we can go to 2020 R1, so it'll link to all my 21, 2020 books, 68. And I didn't actually review it because it doesn't matter. Now, again, there are some key ideas in here and some key quotes. Um, so one of the key ideas is um, software may want to be free, but the people who write it may want uh, to feed their kids and reward their investors on page 380. I just pulled a few quotes out of this book. I didn't like study it like a nonfiction book. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go uh, dash, and I'm gonna go uh, come up with the title, right? Software may want to be free. Uh, where devs want to feed their kids. So I can do that. This is one of the issues right now because I'm in edit mode is I can't easily just like go in and click this link to create my new file automatically. Uh, close eight actions. I can't do that until I get out of the edit mode and then come back in. So now I've created the file. I'm a creative, I've searched for the file. And if I hit create, you'll see right up here that the um, title is what I want, right? .md, because that's what I set in the app. I set it to be .md extension, uh, which would be under editor, I think. Oh, it's one of the settings here, general, .md. I specified the file extension I wanted. Done, and then I would type in the quote. So in this one, I would actually say, oh, and you can actually do this with a link button too bring this down so we can go link because I want to link it to file link and I could link it to so it didn't name this one properly because I didn't rename it yet so let's actually do that first let's go back and rename this to rename this one we'll click it we'll rename and we're gonna call it innovators and I like to format my like it's my Zettel cast an ID with day, month, year, time. So I'll go um, 10, 06, 2020, and the time is 15:40. So now that I have that. I can go back and software developers, software devs want to feed their kids. We've got that in here, and let's create my file link, which I can do right there. Innovators. Now it does include the MD. I just delete it. I don't actually know if it matters. I haven't tested yet. And I'm going to make the quote, and I'll just type it in. So you get to watch me type, or I'll fast forward. Page 380, so I have it. And then I'll just double check my spelling in here, because, you know, occasionally I make mistakes. So the software may want to be free. And let's make sure I think I missed a comma, free, comma, but the people who write it may want to feed their kids and reward their investors from innovators. And I like, just like that idea. I think I've read somewhere else, uh, like there's articles or other stuff talking about software wants to be free. So I think this will be something that I can come back to um, kind of as for or against it in my notes later. It's good, and we will jump back to innovators. Perfect. So, is there any other quotes that I want in here? So, another good quote uh, is "Innovator innovation emerges in places with the right primordial soup," which was true of the Bay Area, but not of Oxfordshire in the 1970s. That's page 407, and that goes with the book I've read previously called "The Geography of Genius." To dig deeper. Um, I read. I think I've read this book before. I don't remember it because I didn't take good notes on it many years ago. But that's one that I would go where it talks about like where does genius crop up geographically. And that's another one. So let's look at that. That's um, innovation. Here it is in 
more deal soup. All right, I preview, I'll tap it because that's what you gotta do. And then I can hit plus and we have it in here. So then I can also do my file link, which I'll touch. I wanna touch my screen and I can go to innovators. Perfect, delete. And then I would copy out the quote again. And then I know that the Geography of Genius talks about this, so I will look up the title to make sure. So let's go to Amazon. And we'll call it the Genius. We've got that, and I will actually grab the book title. Like this, the geography of genius, just to make sure I've got it right and I didn't remember it. Weird. Um, and I'll put in here C. I will have to take out the extra space on how location affects elevation. All right, that's another good one. And that's really all there is. I mean, it's fairly easy to use. You can see I've got that in here. Um, these notes are all going to show up in Obsidian just fine for me. They'll link back and forth without issues. Um, in this one, I may not use uh, the rest. Like I don't have any resources mentioned because I didn't write down any books with my notes, any other things that I wanted to look up. That's not what I was doing at the time. Tags I'm not going to use. There's no tasks in here. Uh, all right, I've already put the quotes in, key ideas that's going to come together. And in a summary of the book, I'm probably not going to do that for this one either just because I don't need to. All right. Now, if I was going to use it to read through some of my other notes, I'd actually grab Dev and Think, and I'd put it side by side. And then I would start going through the notes that I have, right? Return to form. Let me see, what's a good one to go with? Maybe we'll go, I don't see what return to form is, I don't remember. Actually, this is a better one. The how men became emotional gold diggers. Men have no friends and women bear the burden. So in this one, I would go, Create a new file, and I'm going to call it like this. Uh, actually, I think I like the title. I think I will remember it more if I do this. Men have no friends and women bear the burden. I would rename it. All right, paste, and then the date is it's 10-06-2020-15-46. Now that I have that. The date really allows me to just search for it later uh, easily because it's a date and um, time. Yeah, date and time, right, with the year. So then I'd actually use my Zettelkasten Zet thing uh, and I'd put in the full title here. Oh, the author. We have the author. Yep, Melanie Hamlet. So put it in. The URL, I can grab all of this directly from um, copy item links. That's my um, Devon Think URL so that I have my own copy of it forever. And I can copy the URL and try to shortcut actually to deal with this. Tag, I'm talking about probably man, manhood, hood. Emotions. That's all I think for now. And so then what I normally would do is I will take some notes as I go through it and then I would write a, like a short description summary of it at the end.
So I've taken the notes on what I think is important in this, and I'm going to do a quick summary of it. And I think for this article, it's that men don't talk about their feelings enough uh, with other men. And so they put all that burden on their partner, spouse, wife, whatever. And the wife, the woman in their life are fed up with it and aren't going to do that. The remedy to that is men creating relationships with other men so that they can talk about their emotions uh, and not rely on their wives, their spouses. So I'm going to write that now. One thing I think is similar to is actually a book called Boys and Sex. So Boys and Sex talks a lot about how, again, a lot about men's emotional stuntedness and how it's all sex is the only, or domination and sex is the only thing that's allowed. So uh, let's actually look to see if I have this in here. I don't think I do though. Uh, file link. Yeah, I do have Boys and Sex. Talked about men to show that's it. That's a note that I took for this. Now in Devon thing, I'd actually go like this and I'd move it into my research block and that will still preserve the Devon Think URL for me. Now it's filed. Perfect. I've got tags in here. I really linked it to another book that I have and I can like go back and find the article. I have all my bibliographic information in here so I don't need anything like Zotero to do that, uh, which is what they advise in how to take smart notes is some other system to do that, but I just take it right in my notes. And this note is now perfectly usable by Obsidian as it syncs over without any issues. If you liked the video, you can give me a thumbs up below. If you loved it, you can subscribe. If you really liked it, then you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and support the channel. Have an excellent day.